In this video, I'm going to review this 2015 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. I'm also going to describe the differences between the different models of the seventh generation Corvette and what to watch out for if you're shopping to buy one yourself. So stick around. Let me begin with a brief overview of the C7 Corvette. The seventh generation Corvette was introduced to the public at the North American International Auto Show in Detroit, Michigan in January 2013. It went on sale in the fall of 2013 as a 2014 model. It was clearly a departure from what Chevy had produced in previous generations. For example, this is a 1996, which is the final model year for the C4 generation. This is my 2000 convertible from the C5 generation. And here's my current 2007 coupe from the C6 generation. All of these models were similar in that they had more rounded features to them. For the C7, Chevy went in a different direction. They used more angular lines and sharp edges. The biggest controversy was about the taillights. Basically every Corvette from the original 1953 through 2013 had used rounded taillights. But not anymore. The C7 taillights looked more like the current Camaro than they did the Corvette. And while I personally don't have a problem with the taillight design, I have to admit sometimes I think Corvette owners are just looking for something to complain about. The 7th generation Corvette also saw a return to the name Stingray. The Stingray name had been used for the C2 or 2nd generation Corvette that was built from 1963 through 1967. The C7 was available in both a coupe and convertible right from the start. And you could get either a manual transmission or an optional automatic with each. The seventh generation had a six-year run from 2014 through 2019. In 2020, Chevy introduced the world to the first mid-engine Corvette, the C8. But that's a story for another video. Now I'm going to give a brief overview of the changes that Chevy made in each year of the C7. While this is not a complete list, it'll give you a general overview of the differences in each model year. First, let's start with the basics. The 2014 Stingray is powered by the LT1 6.2 liter V8 engine. It makes 455 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. If you order the optional dual mode exhaust, each of those numbers increases by 5 to 460 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. The 2014 came with a 7-speed manual transmission or an optional 6-speed automatic. This automatic is the GM 6L80 that had been used in the C6 generation Corvette going all the way back to 2006. Standard wheels are 18 inch front and 19 inch in rear unless you ordered the Z51 performance package. The Z51 included 19 inch front and 20 inch rear. It also included dry sump lubrication for the engine, close ratio gearing, a transmission cooling system, larger slotted brake rotors and cooling ducts, electronic limited slip differential, and a differential cooling system. If you're considering tracking your C7, then you're going to want to opt for the Z51 performance package. I'd also suggest you get the magnetic ride control active handling system with performance traction management as well. That will give you the best handling performance on the track without modifying the car. In 2015, the Corvette was available with an 8-speed automatic transmission. This GM 8L90 transmission was used all the way through the final model year of 2019. The Z51 performance package for 2015 now includes the dual mode exhaust that had been optional in 2014. Now I'm going to do a quick demonstration of one of the other new features that was added for the 2015 model year. This vehicle is equipped with the PDR or performance data recorder. And so the way you use that is you go back here to the glove box and you open it up and you see I have an SD memory card sitting in there. And so that SD card slides in the slot right here. We'll just push that in, close the glove box and come back over here to the PDR and we'll push the PDR button. And you can see, start recording, define the finish line, choose your video overlay. So track, sport, performance, timing, um, all kinds of things. So indicated there. But the biggest news of 2015 was the return of the Z06. 
This performance version of the Corvette is powered by the supercharged LT4 6.2 liter V8 engine. It makes 650 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. It has the same two transmission options as the base model Stingray and is available in a coupe or convertible version. 2016 brought some additional upgrades. The infotainment system now supported Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Chevrolet also introduced a new steering wheel for the Corvette. Here you see the traditional round steering wheel found in the 2014 and 2015 models. And here is the new flat bottom steering wheel that appeared in 2016 and ran all the way through the end of the C7 generation in 2019. Front parking cameras also became a standard feature if you purchased the 2LT or 3LT option package. Now, since I mentioned 2LT and 3LT, let me explain what comes with each. First, it's important to know that the base model is considered 1LT, unless you have a Z06 and then it's the 1LZ. The 1LT includes your power seats, driver and passenger, your power tilt and telescopic steering wheel, a 9-speaker Bose system, backup camera, removable roof panel, or if you have the convertible, a power convertible top. You also get the Chevy MyLink infotainment system with an 8-inch touchscreen. The 1LZ in a Z06 gets you the heads-up display as well, and with some interior colors, such as, say, red seats, you would get matching red paddle shifters and red stitching throughout the interior. When you move up to 2LT option package, now you get heated and ventilated seats with lumbar support, Bose 10-speaker premium audio system, auto dimming mirrors, memory seats, mirrors, and steering column, and heads-up display. With the 3LT model, you get a variety of interior components that are upgraded. So, for example, over here on our A-pillar, you can feel this is kind of a micro suede, um, and that runs across the top here as well. Um, it is a Napa leather that's used here on the dashboard, and you can actually see with this model, one of the problems that develops is that with heat uh, exposure, you can have it start to bubble up where it actually, the glue has let go, and so that's something that'll have to be fixed on this particular car. Um, and then the same thing over here on the door panels, um, this is anywhere that you touch. So this is the upgraded Napa leather, uh, as well as your glove box where your armrest is, that's an upgraded Napa leather. That's all part of the 3LT option package. Also included is the navigation system and the performance data recorder. In 2017, Chevy reintroduced the Grand Sport model to the lineup. The Grand Sport is kind of a cross between a Stingray and a Z06. You get looks that are similar to a Z06. You get Michelin Pilot Super Sport summer tires. You get unique Grand Sport wheels. More about those later. Brembo braking system, magnetic ride control, electronic limited slip differential, and the 460 horsepower version of the LT1 with the dry sump oiling system and the active exhaust. For 2018, was basically a carryover of the 2017 model, with the exception of a limited Carbon 65 edition to celebrate the 65th anniversary of the Corvette, and I won't go into those details here. 2019 brought the return of the ZR1, the ultimate performance Corvette, available in both coupe or convertible version. It was also available in both a 7-speed manual and an 8-speed automatic transmission. The ZR1 is powered by the LT5, or 6.2 liter, supercharged V8, making 755 horsepower and 715 pound-feet of torque. The car is capable of 214 miles per hour, with the optional ZTK performance package that includes a high rear wing to help generate more downforce. With this being the only year of the 7th generation Corvette ZR1, Chevrolet only produced 2,953 of them, of which only 512 were convertibles. Now, I've always felt that the Corvette is a mass production car, and as such, virtually none of them are truly a collector's item. With maybe this notable exception, there are only 140 2019 Corvette ZR1 convertibles with a 7-speed manual transmission. With those kind of numbers, I can see where 20 years from now, that model might be considered a collector's item. At least that's my theory. Now let's talk about key things to look out for if you're shopping to buy a C7 Corvette. First, as I had mentioned previously, 
If you're looking at a 3LT model, or in the case of a Z06, a 3LZ model, you need to pay special attention to that dashboard. That Napa leather, as I indicated, is prone to bubbling up on the passenger side, or it starts to pull away from the vent in the center of the dash, as you can see in this picture. Second, if you're looking at a Grand Sport or Z06 model, pay special attention to the wheels. There have been numerous complaints about poor quality wheels that either crack or warp. A number of class action lawsuits have been filed against GM over this issue in the last few years. This does not appear to be a problem with base model Stingrays. Third, pay special attention to the top of the windshield on the inside of the vehicle. Many customers have reported that the top of the windshield starts to show delamination on the inside layer. It'll appear perhaps to look like small bubbles along the top. Fourth, on the front windshield, look closely at the corners on the inside of the car, especially on the passenger side. Customers have reported that for some strange reason, they get a crack across the corner of the windshield on the inside of the car. And it has nothing to do with an impact to the outside of the vehicle. Fifth, check your 8-inch MyLink touchscreen. Make sure the image is clear and that the screen goes up and down properly. Image issues may just require a software update or could indicate that the screen is faulty. And last but not least, if you have a 2014 through 2018 Z06 model that you like to take out at the racetrack, look out for overheating issues. In December of 2020, Chevy put out a bulletin to dealers that said that these vehicles, quote, may have a condition where the vehicle may overheat and enter a reduced power mode when driven on a track at sustained high speeds in high ambient temperatures. The bulletin goes on to say that the extended warranty will be offered on all of these Z06 models, covering this issue for seven years or 72,000 miles, whichever comes first, from the original sale date. And it doesn't matter whether it's the original owner of the car or not. To fix the problem, there is an updated radiator package and updated shift point calibration software for customers that have the 8-speed automatic transmission. Now that I've covered the differences in each model year and what to look out for when you're shopping for a C7 Corvette, I'm going to go through this 2015 Stingray that I borrowed from my friend Rocky to demonstrate some of the features of the car. This Stingray is a fully loaded model with the Z51 performance package, 3LT option package, upgraded black aluminum wheels, red brake calipers, transparent roof panel, and 8-speed automatic transmission. If you're curious, the original window sticker price of this car was $75,365. Now, as we look at the steering wheel, and because this is a 2015 model, this is still the round steering wheel. Um, as you get into newer models, I believe it was 2016, uh, they went to a flat bottom steering wheel. On your right hand side over here, you have a variety of buttons. Now these will control what's up here on the dash. So for example, if I hit the select button and move the arrows, you can see I can see what my speed limit is, fuel use, timer, um, fuel economy, my tire pressures is in there what my oil life looks like, my fuel range, uh, my trip odometer, of course, A and B, that's all in there. And so that's all controlled with uh, these buttons here. Now, as I move over on this side, this is your um, cruise control on and off, and then this is for setting, resume, etc. And then the lower part here you'll see is the volume controls for your stereo, and you actually pull up with your hands on the steering wheel in order to raise and lower the volume. And on this side, of course, is for um, your stations up and down. And then as I move over here on the side, you'll see we have the controls for your power tilt and telescopic steering wheel. You have um, controls for uh, lighting is in here. Your heads up display controls, you wanna raise and lower it is there. This is for your outside mirrors left and right. And then as we go down below, you will see two buttons down here. One, of course, is for releasing, releasing the rear hatch. The other one is for uh, turning off, actually, the security system that is in this particular model. In the center, we have the Chevy MyLink system. You have an 8-inch touchscreen. Notice it's giving you both the time and the outside temperature. And But, of course, it has controls for everything else. So if you want to go to your uh, 
audio, you have AM, FM, and Sirius XM satellite radio. I can, of course, push the home button, bring you back. You can connect your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to your cell phone if you want. Of course, you have a navigation system in this particular model. And we'll just home back out. Um, you have Pandora, you have weather. So you have a variety of things that are available through your eight inch touchscreen. And as I shift it in reverse, you'll see that it is equipped with a backup camera. It is part of the package that you get with this car. So one of the cool features of this car is behind your eight inch touchscreen, there is actually a storage compartment. You push this button and you see it goes down. And on the inside, you even have a USB port in order to uh, plug in and your iPhone, for example, and stick it in there and just push the screen button and back up it goes and comes back on. Being that this is a 3LT version of the car, you'll notice that uh, it has both uh, heated and cooled driver and passenger seats. And one of the interesting things with that is it can be controlled by the passenger either by these two buttons or over here on the side, you'll notice it also has buttons over here below the vent where you can also control the heated or cooled seats. And as you look below where all your controls for the climate controls are, you'll notice you do have this pop-up power connector in case you have an accessory you need to plug in. Back here, of course, you have your two cup holders. You have your electronic parking brake. You have your mode selection button. So this, you turn the dial in order to change what uh, track setting, tour mode, eco mode, weather mode, all of that is handled through this dial. And then as I back up over here, you have a glove box. And I will open the glove box and show you on the inside of the glove box. You have uh, USB ports for plugging your device in. And you also have another round power connector here on the inside of the glove box. And that's all in this center console area. Now I'm going to demonstrate your rear cargo space as I open it up. You can see there's 15 cubic feet of cargo space back here. Certainly plenty if you want to take it grocery shopping or you're a golfer, you want to put a couple of PGA Tour bags back here. You got room for that. Now as I pan over this way, you can see it has a uh, cargo net. It also has a power connection over here on the side if you got something you want to plug into. So that is your spacious rear cargo area on a Stingray. Now I'm going to demonstrate how you remove your target top. So you flip down your sun visors and you'll see you have two latches on each side. You just pull the latches like that and then back here you have this one which you push the button and it pulls down and now the entire target is released and ready to be moved. Now I'm going to demonstrate how you stow the target top in the back of the car. So I'm going to come around and lift the target top off. And I'll bring it back around. The front of the target goes in first and it has a mounting point on each side that it sets into and it snaps into place. And so it is securely held, won't rattle around, won't move while you're driving. So it's real simple to take that target top and put it on and off whenever you want. Some of you may be thinking, hey, Tom, why are you focusing so much time on what's wrong with the car? You know, I just want to give a few pointers, things to look out for, for people that are shopping for one. They're great cars, don't get me wrong. I think all the Corvettes have been great cars, going all the way back to the end of the, even the C4 generation. I loved my 96 that I had. I thought that was a great car. Um, and I enjoyed the two C5s, the two C6s that we've had. Um, the C7 is a great car. I'm looking forward to driving a C8 for the first time coming up here in a few days. But if you're looking for a sharp looking performance sports car and you really you can't beat this for the money. I mean, when you get into a Porsche 911 or you, by God, you can't look at a Ferrari or a Lamborghini under a hundred grand practically nowadays. Um, I would tell you that for the money, this is the way to go. They're really wonderful cars. You just got to look out for a few things, um, as you would with any automobile, um, to make sure that you're making a good buy. Obviously, I would always recommend 
if you have a mechanic and the seller will allow you to take the car to a mechanic, have a mechanic, put it up on the lift, check it all out. Um, that's the best and safest way to go. Unless you're buying a certified pre-owned from a dealer, obviously then Chevrolet is going to back it up. So up to you on how you want to do that. But um, I definitely recommend, it's a great car. And that concludes my review of this 2015 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray and what to look for if you're shopping for a 7th generation Corvette. My name is Tom Straup. You've been watching Find the Right Road. If you enjoyed that video, please click the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks, and we'll catch you next time.